today we're doing something a little bit different today we're tasting wines for sure yeah but we're tasting popular commercial wines but they're under 1500 rupees and the best part about it we're doing it blind i have no idea what we're tasting how we're tasting who bought it where it came from but we'll see what i think about these wines and if they're really worth would i spend this kind of money in it is it value for money wine is it wine i wouldn't really like we'll find out soon enough so keep watching So a nice little color like I think it may have been oaked smelling the wine It's got some nice dark berries cherries a little bit of strawberry in this wine as well it's got a good mix of red fruits and darker fruits so I would suggest but this comes it it seems like it comes from a hot climate area because it 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 feels like overripe kind of fruits Yeah definitely I think I'm confident that this has a little bit of french oak to it I'm getting a little bit of the sweet spices it's got a little peppery aroma to it as well maybe spent a few months in french oak i would say but it's still got a little sweeter smell to it as well so i'm assuming it is french oak it's got a little bit of acid to it as well definitely very dry it tastes very similarly to what it smells like it tastes a little bit of that cranberry that kind of for it also tastes tastes a little leafy it tastes like i put a bunch of eucalyptic leaves and i put them all in my mouth and i added some pepper to it and that's what this wine smelling a little bit like uh very interesting i would pair this if i had to pair this i would pair this with some meaty stuff this is a full bodied wine i wouldn't say this is a light medium bodied wine because it's got a little bit of complexity to it because it has a good blend of fruit with the oak from the sweet spices but it's also got the little bit of tertiary aromas which may come from it's the the leafy the vegetal the tobacco kind of smell that i'm getting if i would i would drink this wine but i would, i would i would prefer to drink this wine when i'm eating something meaty something from a barbecue maybe or maybe something indian as well maybe something mutton or kebab i have a feeling i've had this wine somewhere but i'm not sure of course it's a grover's la reserve i told you i thought i thought i may have had this wine somewhere very decently job done i must say i know that this wine was in collaboration with the with a with a french um, with a french consultant named michel roland so i'm assuming that's where the french oak comes from I guess I'm doing a fine job so far. Let's keep seeing. We have a few wines. We have a few wines set up. Uh it's a little bit lighter than the last one. Um this is a paler rubia color. Um smells like a sock for some reason. But we 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 doesn't matter. We'll still continue. It smells like two socks now. Okay, it's getting worse. Anyway, definitely a little bit of fruit you get a little bit of fruit i don't think this wine is aged i don't think i'm going to drink this wine um i should but i don't want to it's not a very appealing smell i don't think i want to like you know how you have wines that you smell you go wow i really want to taste what this is like this is not giving me very pleasant aroma so i'm not really sure if i want to taste it but i'll i'll go ahead with it that's surprising it tastes really good It tastes like it tastes like grape juice. It tastes like straw it tastes like strawberries and cherries doesn't smell like it at all but it tastes a lot like strawberries and cherries. I'm assuming this comes from a cooler climate area. I don't think this comes from a very warm climate area. Not a lot of high alcohol because you don't see the tears as much but um interesting. I think this is a very fruit forward wine. Uh no complexity. fruit forward the the wine maker wanted to capture the essence of the fruit and that's it i think it's a uh, high production high sale kind of wine it's a very mass it, it seems like a mass moving wine but it's very fruit forward it's it's an all day drinking wine i would say super approachable in my opinion but i wish it smelled a little better it tastes like a good wine i i don't mind paying uh, i mean if it is if it smelled a little better I I can see myself enjoying this wine. It get a lot of luscious strawberry like a bubblegum kind of kind of taste. It 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 tastes like big bubble, I'm not kidding. So, yeah. Let's see what bottle this is. I'm quite interested in seeing what bottle this is. Of course, it's Barefoot Cabernet Sauvignon. So, it's a Barefoot Cabernet Sauvignon. This is a good all-day drinking wine. It's not very heavy on your budget. And it's I mean, yeah, it's a fruit forward wine. No wonder they're they're one of the biggest producers. They're one of the biggest sellers when it comes to popular wines. These guys are number 1. owned by ENJ Gallo if i'm not wrong these guys 
they're, they're, all, they're all about making wine easy for the consumer. So they'll make fruit forward wines, they'll make it quick, they'll make it nice, they'll make it simple and they're there for you to enjoy. So interesting. Yeah. So wine number three, let's take a look at this one. Very interesting color. Uh, it's losing a bit of its color on the sides which gives me the idea that this may be aged. Uh, I haven't smelled the wine yet. Uh, let's take a look at the tears of this wine. They all look like very dark ruby red colors. All of the wines that I've tasted so far have been very... So yeah, I would say this has a little bit of higher alcohol levels. Let's smell it. Okay, some nice currants. It's got this nice black currant, red currant. It's got a little bit of... It's, it's got a little bit of plum. It... Um, it smells like a wine which has been oaked, uh, I would say. It smells like a pretty decent wine, actually. It smells like wine, which is a good thing. Uh, you wouldn't want to test anything uh, which doesn't smell like wine. Um, get some good red fruits. You get some good, decent black fruits as well. I don't think I would be wrong to say that this is a Cabernet Sauvignon. I also believe I may have tasted this wine somewhere before, so I think that's why I know that this may be a Cabernet Sauvignon. Seems like it comes from a a Mediterranean to a hot climate area uh, because the fruits are a little bit more pronounced like the smell of the fruits is a little bit more pronounced but it does have a little bit of oak I think because you're getting a little bit of the vanilla uh, which is the sweetness but you're also getting a little bit of the sweet spices which is the cinnamon clove you get a little bit of this nutmeg smell in this wine which gives me the idea that this may be oak I think this is one of the more complex wines that we've tasted so far. It's got a little bit of this pepper that hits you at the back. Again, it's very dry, very, very dry actually. Again, makes me think which comes from a very hot climate area. Um, I don't know. I've tasted this wine, um, but it's a really good wine. I, I would drink this wine if I was ever eating a meal. It'll go very well with, again, it, this, this wine actually might go very well with the noor items. So I would definitely suggest this, this wine. It's a good wine. Let's see what wine this is. Of course it is. It's Sula Rasa. It's Cabernet Sauvignon. I did say it was a Cabernet Sauvignon. Good thing about Sula is that they actually have 60% market share when it comes to India. And uh, I mean, they're definitely doing something, right? Um, I personally am not a big consumer when it comes to Sula, but this is a wine that I'd recommend. I quite like this wine, actually. I had no idea this is a Sula Rasa. Um, I'm happy it is. Yeah, go India. So we're on to wine number I'm not even counting anymore and this wine is uh, looks like wine uh, it's a little lighter in color it's ruby again paler ruby uh, but it's but it's a little pinker than it's a little less it's a little less intense than the wines that we tasted before um, my assumption is it comes possibly from a cooler climate area okay so it's got some good strawberry aromas to it it's got some nice crushed roses aromas to it it's got a little bit of minerality to this wine as well. I quite, I'm enjoying the smell. I'm enjoying the way this wine smells. Smells like a cigar gone bad also. Not a good thing, but um, I mean, it's in its basic necessities. It smells like what a wine should, which is always a good thing. What does it taste like? Hmm. Tastes very similar. To what it smells like which is also another very good thing it tastes a little bit like chewing gum like the, the strawberry kind of chewing gum it smells a little bit of raspberries a little bit of darker berries it's very fruit forward approachable it's a daily drinking wine an easy drinking wine nothing very complex about it my guess is that it's got nice gripping tannins as well my guess is that it comes from a south american region either argentina or chile i think it comes from a cooler climate valley maybe uh, I'm not completely sure, but I think I'm I'm willing to take that gamble just just because of the way it, it it's smelling and tasting. And I may have had this one. It's Cosecha by Tara Paka. It's a Cabernet Sauvignon. I was thinking this is a Cabernet Sauvignon. Guess what region this comes from? It comes from South America. It comes from Chile. So I wasn't wrong. Wow. Okay. So I guess years of experience and money finally paid out. I'm starting to taste wines correctly. Um, yeah. It says so at the back. It's an interesting label. I quite like it. And I'll tell you what it says at the back. It says, A versatile and elegant wine, young and easy to drink, ideal to accompany all occasions and moments of life. Like I said, it's an easy drinking wine. Drink it wherever, drink it however. 
it does its job and it's definitely worth its money if it's less than 1500 bucks honestly in my opinion i drink this wine every day and we're off to our last wine i'm relieved i've had way too much and i shouldn't be talking right now but since we're drinking and there's a last wine i'm excited let's go for it it's a dark ruby color again um but that's about it it seems like it has higher alcohol levels because the tears are there it's got decent intensity of aromas you get a little bit of aromas as well very similar to the wines we've tasted before in terms of the fruit profiles because again i'm getting a lot of uh, darker fruits but very interestingly i'm getting a lot of pepper as well um i think i know exactly what wine this is because i grew up around this wine in terms of before i knew anything about wine this is all the wine i was having uh, this is my pre-education wine uh, so it, it it smells very very similar it's taking me back to some memories i shouldn't have fruit forward spicy acidic nice it's crunchy for this some for some reason this wine is a crunchy little wine it, it it's this is what i would call a wine designed to do exactly what it needs to do it's not a typical typical wine but it it does its job like i wouldn't you wouldn't want to pay too much for this wine but it's it's doing its job it it looks like wine it tastes like wine it smells like wine and i think this is a jacob's creek and lo and behold this is exactly what i thought it was it is a jacob's creek classic shiraz cabernet wine from australia it's got 13.9 percent wow would i recommend this wine definitely i've had this wine with pizzas a lot i would suggest you have a lot of this wine a lot of pizza you can individually drink this wine as well interesting wine so i had a blast today i tasted six different wines uh some i mean in essence they were similar grapes so that gave me a better idea in a way of how i treat these grapes and how i treated these wines as the cabernet sauvignons the mostly the cabernet sauvignons that they were but i think i i want to limit it down to two wines that i really liked one of them was the grover's la reserve which i quite liked and another one was the was the cosecha cabernet sauvignon which i quite liked i think these two wines were my personal favorites uh, other wines i'm sure people love them i'm sure there's a great calling for them i'm sure there's a cult for them unfortunately um these two are the ones that stood out for me each wine has its own kind of individuality every wine speaks for itself some are just meant for its fruit driven aromas some of them are just meant to pair some of them are complex and need time so they're all good wines now you can use my opinion or you could shove it in the garbage but all i want to say is don't base your opinions just because i said so you can like whatever wine that you like a good wine is basically a wine that you like so you could be given the most expensive wine and you might say that this is the worst wine i've ever had and that's fine so your taste your preference is what matters uh, i hope you enjoyed the video uh, let me know in the comments below if you like this video that way we can do another one for white wines uh, another thing let me know uh, if what kind of wines you would like me to review any wines that you'd like me to do uh that way we can have a more engaging a more fun kind of conversation when we're making these kind of videos uh so yeah i hope you had a good time cheers and i'm gonna i'm gonna go home with my babies tonight yeah see you guys bye have a good one